Well, good morning, everybody. We just woke up from our little Airbnb here. We are on a houseboat. I'll do a quick tour of the houseboat, but today we are going on a road trip. Some of the best road trips you can take from Copenhagen. Now, this is more on the east side of Denmark, and we're going to be making a loop over to Sweden, hitting some of the best pastry shops today and some pretty amazing castles. So stay tuned and we will get you on the road with us. So pretty. Got a little shower. Okay, so when you're coming here, you want to make sure that you just have like backpacks, not roller bags, because this is a little challenging to get in. All right, this is where we're staying. It's a cute little boat. Um, I'll show you the outside in just a second, but has a little kitchen, a couple beds. There's one bed here, one behind the curtain. Surprise, one behind curtain number one. And then our favorite, Erin is here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> She's got a bed back here with some a uh, little bookcase, and then right out here is the canal. Look at how picturesque that is. And here we have the Museum of Copenhagen. After picking up our rental car and documenting all the dents and scratches on it, we headed out to Anderson and Milliard Bakery. Founded in 1847 by J.C. Jacobson and his son Carl, it is known for over 500 local beers. They're also dedicated to pursuing scientific research. One of the discoveries was the yeast used to make pale lager. So right behind me here, this is the Elephant Gate, one of the unique things that you can see when you're in Copenhagen, and also a great stop on our way up to Frederiksborg Castle and Kronberg Castle. But this Elephant Gate was built by Carl, Carlsberg in 1901. And the elephant here actually has a swastika on the side of it. Now, before you freak out, these were built in 1901, way before World War II. And so the swastika is actually a symbol for a Sanskrit word that means luck or auspicious. Um, and so it was kind of built to help him and his family become successful. Um, each of the elephants have initials of one of his four remaining children that were alive at the time that this was built and it's just kind of become a staple of the city now kind of an interesting thing to see if you're over in the area or coming to carlsberg brewery for a brewery tasting or a beer tasting Okay, we just arrived at Frederiksborg Castle, and there's also a Frederiksberg, B-E-R-G, so make sure you're actually inputting the correct one. So this is about a 40 minute drive away from Copenhagen. We downloaded the app called Easy Park, which I'll pop right here, um, but it makes it really easy once you have your, your license plate number to pop that in, and then it'll have a parking number if you turn on the GPS location for your phone um, that you can choose it, how much time you're gonna spend. And then if you overstay the time, you can also add it from the app as well. So it makes it really convenient, but we're gonna he head in here and I'll tell you more about this castle in a minute. Frederiksborg Castle is located in Hillerod, Denmark. It was initially built as a royal residence for Christian IV, but it burnt down in 1859, but was rebuilt meticulously based on drawings and now is officially the Danish Museum of Natural History. The only rooms that were spared in the fire were the chapel and the audience chamber, stunningly gilded with gold. It wasn't too crowded when we were visiting on a weekend and the tickets cost around 90 Danish kroner or around 13 US dollar. There's plenty of parking, but not really any place to grab snacks and the gift shop has a few sweets, but other than that, make sure to bring your own. To all those women warriors who feel they can't keep up with beauty standards, to those who, like me, have been mocked, spat at, publicly and privately ridiculed, when the strangers don't know your strength or your story, my heart goes out to you specifically, and you aren't alone, and there is an army of people who love you if you just let them. 
Thank you to Marie Hald for your artistry and moving message. It was unexpected and also much needed. Visiting Fredericksburg Castle is certainly worth it. There are lavish decorations, an incredible cathedral, enchanting Baroque gardens, and some of the most intricate ceilings I've ever seen. And I've been to a lot of castles. I can't believe the throne room and the cathedral here aren't plastered all over Instagram and social media, to be honest, because they are so stunning. After Fredericksburg, we headed over to Kronberg Castle, which is more to the north, and where we would take the ferry over to Helsingborg, Sweden. The drive is about 32 minutes, and when you arrive, I would park at the little grocery shop and then walk over to Kronberg. It looked like the safest spot to park and not get in trouble. Welcome to Kronberg Castle. So this castle was built in the 1480s and it was to protect the sound which connected uh, Denmark to Sweden. So ships that would pass through here would actually have to pay a fee in order to use that sound. So it helped Frederick II become quite wealthy. And inside in the basement, you will find the Ogre Dansky, I think, who is a a uh, mythical knight that will rise to protect Denmark when under attack. This castle is also very well connected to Hamlet. Now inside you'll find the longest banquet hall in Scandinavia. They're, the courses that they used to feed the guests consisted of 65 different courses and each of the guests had their own vomiting bucket. I feel like there needs to be a, a, a measure of self-control in that respect but you know medieval times and rich people what do you do kind of sounds like today but anywho moving on we'll enter the castle show you around the rooms and keep this journey going jet lag's hitting me a little bit so forgive me if i'm pronouncing things wrong and looking a little worse for wear and guarding her. So Frederick II's daughter, Anna, she actually married King James VI of Scotland and they um, stayed in these apartments after they were married all winter because there were so many storms. So, and it was also saying that when royal people traveled, they brought their entire household with them. So when the Scottish King came, he had 600 staff members with him. And there was a King of Brunswick who apologized for only bringing 300 staff members. I mean, I feel like I should apologize for just bringing me. We're going into the casemates to look at the ogre, Dane, famous statue. 
It's a little creepy going down. Is visiting Kronberg Castle worth it? I think it is if we hadn't have visited Fredericksburg Castle just a few hours before. Going from a castle that was so ornately decorated to a castle that was eventually used as army barracks and become uh, quite plain in the way it's decorated, it kind of took away the magic of it, to be honest. But if you are going to Kronberg Castle, Try to catch it during a time when a play of Hamlet or a showing of Hamlet is being uh, exhibited, and I think it would really bring some of that extra magic. Well, that is it for Kronberg Castle. We are now going to find something to eat because jet lag's hitting hard. <laughs> I'm so sleepy. We're just leaving Kronberg Castle. We're getting on the ferry with 4C, and it is a ferry that leaves every 20 minutes, pretty much all day, over to Sweden. And then I'm gonna take the loop around or drive the coastal towns of Sweden down to Malmo, and then take the bridge from Malmo over to Copenhagen and to return the car. But to get on this ferry, it's around 460 Danish kroner for a standard car of two people. They do allow campers as well as big trucks. You can see over here. Um, and it should be a pretty easy ride over. I think it takes about an hour if I'm not mistaken, but I'll put the time. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, it takes 20 minutes. That's why it comes every 20 minutes. Pretty short ride over there for being another country, but. Oh man, the people here are so nice. Um, so they gave us a few tips on where to go to see the coolest building in Lund. And we're just gonna wander around the streets a bit and show you guys what there is to see here. It's quieting down a little bit, so it looks like this is kind of a happening place and just very relaxed vibes. But uh, we'll show you what, you can, what we can uh, now that the sun is setting. So we are here in Lund, and this is one of the oldest cities in modern day Sweden. It was established around 300 years ago, but they've actually found Viking remnants here that dates it to over a thousand years ago. They think it was established kind of at the end of the Viking era. We're just trying to find the old city right now. Once we do, we'll let you know. We've had a bit of a laugh attack. We're getting to the point of being punch drunk, punchy, whatever. Ooh, these buildings are really old, look at this. This tree is like full of crows. I don't know if you can hear them, but it's really kind of creepy. It's right near this park. Okay, so this is the Lund Cathedral. And then we're going to go over to the library building, which is the red brick building across the square. But this cathedral was built in 11. 
1845 and Queen Margaret came here with her son Olaf. Unfortunately, he died around 17 and then um, the queen loved her son so much that she actually removed his heart and put it in this cathedral, which is considered a pilgrimage site that has connections to Mary, the mother of Jesus. So worth a stop to look inside. It looks like it would be beautiful. Unfortunately, we have gotten here too late. The sun's about to set and so everything is pretty much closing. Lund was the perfect place to end our extravaganza of a day trip from Copenhagen. I definitely would have done this trip differently to try to do it in two or three days instead of all of it in just one day because there was so much that we missed. Make sure to check out culturetrekking.com for full written guides and I will see you in the next one.